Okay, let us do the corrections for Emacs paper 2 now. Uh, given that A is equal to this, you are supposed to find the values. Now, when you say values, means there's more than one B. Okay, and A equals this, C equals this. Now, you must show the substitution of these values inside. And very importantly, whenever you sub anything, right, you must put brackets. Okay, uh, why put brackets? Number one, it... Um, It prevents you from making mistakes like this okay because this is actually 16 minus 1 but it's uh, the in reality right you actually want to multiply them all together so if they see you writing things like that you mark you wrong okay uh, the other thing is uh, to put brackets right is to show that you are replacing this with this this with this okay now um, you square both sides next and then you end up with this cross multiply and then you will have this and of course you must have two different answers one plus one minus okay now we move on to the second part now indices huh, you must know the laws of indices very well so the first one that you need to know is anything to the power of zero is one so this part here is just one okay the other thing is uh, when you have a to the power m then you have bracket right to the power of n uh, bracket means like times okay so that's how you can remember this is different from this times this okay when you have this combine uh, times this uh, you're actually uh, adding the power so please know the difference between these two many of you still not very sure so this part here is just three square not six ah uh. Some of you are still writing 6. So this 3 squared is 9. This is Q. Uh, this part here, again, you just apply this power here. Apply this power here. Now, why is it uh, 5 to the power minus 1? Now, if you don't know, right, don't, don't uh, write 5 to the power minus 1. Actually, what uh, we have done is this. And this is uh, this law here so that's why it's 5 minus 1 but if you don't know right never mind you press calculator you will get 1 over 5 and that is the same as 5 to the power of minus 1 at the numerator okay uh, next this times this you get this this times this you get this now you see uh, this minus this minus so there's no point bringing this up and then you end up with another minus so you just leave this here and very nicely it's positive index because ultimately your answer must all be in positive index okay now the other thing is this uh, um, you already have 9 over 5 right so you just leave it as 9 over 5 do not go and press calculator and then you end up with a uh, decimal over a fraction no we, we do not accept and O level don't accept also okay they want uh, simplest form okay uh, so we have this where this now this fella must come down because uh, we want positive index then this two you cannot leave it like that it must be simplest form combined together okay so that's all for indices indices you should score uh, full marks huh? okay now the next one is this um, how do we get uh, I mean you can either use elimination or you can use substitution method huh? okay this part here I leave it to you the only thing I want to say is you cannot uh, go and 3 SF this one it must be exact okay yeah and remember uh always must find x and y uh, because there are two unknowns here okay two unknowns you cannot just find x and then happily go to the next question you cannot uh next one uh you want to express as a single fraction okay single fraction and of course even if they don't say it must be in the simplest form all right now how do you start things off uh? you must make the denominator the same okay uh so you do that by factorizing each denominator then you make the denominator the same and then you combine into a single fraction so this is how you do it huh? okay notice that this is a difference of two squares so it's this square minus this square right then you write in this form this one remains unchanged uh this you can use your calculator uh but some of you are uh, uh, still you know you press your calculator then you get this you press your calculator then you get this <coughs> uh, you some of you are going to write it this way 
okay in a maths uh, there's a question something i think question number one of paper two something like that right many of you wrote it this way we will not accept you writing things like that here okay uh it shows that you're using the calculator uh so how do you write it now you can use the calculator i strongly recommend uh, just in case you make any careless mistake if you use manual calculation but do not do not leave it like that uh, leave it like that means uh, you don't know what's going on uh. so what you need to do is to make the right hand side equal zero uh, but there should not be any fraction so you times three both sides then you minus one so this is what you get that's how you get uh, this one here okay and then this one also uh, you times two you remove the denominator first then you make the right hand side equals to zero please do this huh you must write in this form okay now after you have done that uh, then you take a look at what you have here 1 plus 3x I have you don't have so you must have correct uh, you must have meaning to say that I times here and uh, numerator and denominator this same thing now I have you have very good uh, 1 minus 3x 3x minus 1 I have you don't have Actually, we can be the same if I simply put a minus here. Okay, this is not changing anything uh, to this fraction because I'm just multiplying by minus 1 here, minus 1 here. That's effectively multiplying by 1 to this fraction. So, I'm just doing makeup. Alright, now after I multiply this, this will be the same as this already. Okay, finally, I have 2x plus 5. You don't have, you must have. 2x plus 5 right so this is 2x plus 5 and that is how you end up with this part here and this part here now do not do not expand the denominator okay uh, what you do is you expand the numerator remember both must be expanded and then you uh, don't use mental if you're not strong in mental you press calculator minus 12 plus 51 to get this then minus 30 plus this to get this okay don't take risk huh? and uh, take out common factor if any do not expand the denominator you notice that uh, there's a common factor here and again do not expand your denominator you see factorize denominator only you do not expand if, if you expand you minus your marks why uh? because this is like um, the working for next time when you go high level right this is like the working for a very simple thing then you're going to combine this working with some other things maybe this time some other stuff huh? and then you may have uh, things like that okay uh, 5x you may have things like that. that means you take this times this oh then because it is the simplest form you can take these times uh take take this uh divided by this and then you end up with a simpler expression if you were to expand it right then you have to factorize again before you can simplify so the simplest form okay of this fraction is the factorized denominator form all right that means you don't expand the denominator lah, huh? okay now next part is on uh, this uh, what you call that uh, completing the square eh? okay how to complete the square uh, very simple you focus on this this has got nothing to do with the whole thing you just stay here it's a doggy uh. so what do we do uh, divide this by 2 <coughs> minus this the minus the square of this so you get this all right then please use calculator for this part and that's the answer okay <coughs> now they say hence hence means uh, you must use this part here okay to explain you don't go and anyhow do uh, some other stuff to explain uh. okay uh, explain why this is this okay take note that this part here don't you don't you see that uh, uh, is or don't you agree that it's the same as this which means that this is actually this correct okay and uh, if you to think of it as uh, uh, this is a line because K K actually is a uh, the question uh, actually should say where K is a constant uh, okay 
uh, you add in okay to be more the, the way that the question is being set uh, you, you should say that k is a constant uh, that is very clear all right okay now uh, if this k is a constant then this is actually just a horizontal line do you agree and this of course is a curve and uh, because the coefficient of x squared is positive it's a happy face now what it means is that um, the minimum point uh, bit of this right don't you agree is 3.5 you make this 0 x must be 3.5 right and this is 1 all right okay so 3.51 uh, means that uh, any k any k uh, that I put here uh, any k that I put here right uh, let's say uh, my, uh, let's say 2 uh, sorry 0 or minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 it will not cut right it will not cut you will not cut the curve only the minimum it can go uh, is y equals to 1 right okay so any k less than 1 uh, uh, y equals to k will not cut you add in this okay will not cut the curve So will not have any solutions okay uh, or you can say in this uh, instead of using a uh, point huh, you say minimum value when we talk about the minimum value <coughs> we are talking about this value here <coughs> okay the minimum y value uh, is 1 all right okay then uh, hence for any k less than 1 uh, you will not have any solution uh. Okay, you 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 fill in this part here the same thing. Okay, it's the same thing here is clearer. Huh? Okay, now the next one. We are explaining in terms of uh, just this equation. Huh? Okay, so you see carefully what I do here. I'm going to rewrite this. Huh? Uh, again, same thing here. Uh, you learn these three ways right it will open up your mind uh, then in the exam you just choose one of the way all right uh i think the for emacs right the easiest is this way all right the easiest is this way uh. okay but now you take a look at what i'm showing you here if if i rewrite this uh, as k minus one i minus one both sides uh, i'll get this right okay why do i rewrite this way uh? because uh, we know for sure that this is greater or equal to zero correct now if this is greater or equal to zero it means that this side also must be greater than or uh, equal to zero okay and then you continue on this will be uh, what you have now then you conclude uh, because because k greater or equal to one uh, uh, this right this uh, will not have any solution will not have any solution for k less than one all right this last part here we are just rephrasing this part like if uh, if i'm always greater than this one right then i cannot be here lo. i cannot be below one you follow okay so that's uh that uh, these are the three ways to explain this question now the next one uh, uh it's good to draw a diagram you have a rectangular sheet of paper okay rectangular sheet of paper uh, so you draw a rectangle uh the length is l the breadth is b now if identical squares you see uh, when you draw a picture right you you can ignore this whole statement already you don't have to read it anymore you you follow me that's the power of a diagram now if identical shares of three uh, side three cm are cut from this there will not be any left over that means uh, i cut la i cut i cut all the squares of three cm uh, this three this three right okay there's no left over there's no left over that means it means what uh? it means that uh, this length uh, and this breadth they are all multiples of 3 
Uh, here, here, here. Here, written here already. Uh. So, L, uh, okay, multiples of 3. Okay, uh, then this part also no need to read already, right? Uh, if we rearrange some of these to form a square, that means now, uh, uh, instead of just one sheet of that uh, paper, right, you have more sheets of it. I draw smaller, okay? You... You go and form uh, uh, you go and form it can it can be a few ways of forming lah. Uh you go and form right, let's say this is one example. Oh then you get a square. A, a square and then square uh, one of the side uh, I mean both of the sides are 30 cm. So what does this mean? It means that when I multiply, multiply, multiply uh, the LCM right where did I write it? Uh LCM is 30. Okay? So this is a question on LCM la, this kind of thing. And then you go and uh, find the prime factors. Okay, you will get this. So your length uh, and breadth, right? I told, uh, we said just now it's multiples of 3. Uh, so you must have 3 inside your answer. Okay, and because the length is longer, you choose the bigger one for the length. Choose the smaller one for uh, the breadth. Okay, so that's all. All right, ah. Uh, so this is a, a application question on LCM HCF. Now, uh, the following question, uh, uh, you need to know, okay, because it can be a possible question where you're asked to explain, uh, in terms of percentage, huh? Okay, so it's very simple. You, uh, every one of you know the answer actually, but, uh, you don't know how to explain. So let let us learn how to explain, ah. Uh. Now you see, uh, Shane or Shane, uh, depending on how you pronounce it, swim a lap is 40% more than the time taken by Kai. So if I let this Shane, uh, uh, the timing, let's say Kai, uh, I let it be T, you can let it be X or whatever, up to you. Uh. Then this, right, 40% more means 140 140 uh, over 100 times t right so you can show your working here and then this time by shane uh, will be this okay clear okay now uh what i do right is they ask me whether it is true i'm going to uh use the proof of contradiction contradiction means uh, i now find uh, 60% of the time by Shane. Uh, if I find 60%, okay, I, I do it below. 60%, uh, okay, uh, the one that I do, yeah, 60% of the time by Shane, which is this one, right? The, the thing is that they're asking you whether this is equal to T or not. Then when you press calculator, you want to press calculator, this whole thing, right? You find that A is not. It's actually zero point eight four t. T is chi, so it is not equals to chi. Yeah, so you just say it's not true, lor. Now this concluding statement must be, must be here, okay? You cannot just say oh, I already show what. Cannot, cannot. You must, uh, because they say explain right. So you must uh, say a bit of English ah. Uh, uh, all these are maths. You say a bit of English, okay? So that everybody knows uh, that you know. All right. So that's how. You do this kind of question. Now, this kind of question can come out in many forms, uh, but you use the the method that I taught you, okay? Uh, exam is all about method. So, what method am I teaching you? You assign, uh, what you call that, variable or this letter to one of them. Then you find the time of the other person in terms of this uh, T. Then after that, you continue working in terms of T. Don't go and X la, Y la, don't, don't introduce too many variables, okay? Stick to one. Understand? So that's how you do this kind of question. Now, this is very badly done uh, because you, your uh, number one, didn't read the question carefully. Now, in general, uh, our class, uh, English not very strong. We, and English not very strong is one thing. Uh. The other thing is, English not strong and then we still don't read the question carefully. If we read had read the question carefully, uh, English not strong, right? Still okay, can can do well. Uh. So please 
uh, read carefully and annotate or what I call underline uh, what uh, important thing okay a sweet drink a sweet drink uh, is uh, made by mixing concentrated uh, syrup and water together so there's a drink uh, inside got syrup and water that's all they are saying right now the ratio of syrup to water is this one so this is syrup this is water this part I think clear uh, huh? and they all together has this volume of 200 milliliters now find the volume of water that must be added to the 200 uh, milliliter sweet drink so that the percentage concentration of syrup will be reduced by 10 percent now are we adding any syrup no we are only adding water we're only adding water okay so many of you got this wrong because you thought that we are adding syrup also no we are not adding any syrup to the uh, to the sweet drink okay so what we need to do uh, is first of all uh, find out what is the original amount of uh, syrup because they they say that the percentage concentration of syrup is reduced by this okay uh, 9 over 20 total is 20 yeah uh, okay of 200 right is 90 milliliters so actually originally there was 90 milliliters of water okay this is what i'm showing here all right now uh we want to find now uh, 90 over uh, 200 right what is the uh what you call that uh, uh, percentage of of uh, syrup in the sweet drink okay so you multiply uh, you will get uh, 45% okay now after you've gotten 45% uh, you now go and um, uh, what you call that reduce this by 10 percent but when you reduce this by 10 percent right it is not 45 minus 45 percent minus 10 percent it is not like that one okay it means that it is wrong huh? many of you wrote this huh? so uh, zero from here onwards huh? it means that uh, originally this is 100 percent okay you are reducing these are uh, to 90 percent all right so in order to calculate this are uh, the new uh, concentration of syrup right it should be 90 over 100 because you take away 100 percent uh, of this okay so you must read the question carefully uh. this is what you should be having all right so it's 40.5 percent remaining and not 35 percent okay clear now you don't actually uh, this step is uh, redundant uh. you actually can take uh, to this whole this whole thing right you can take 9 over the uh, whole thing is 20 okay then you times 100 percent you get the same value okay uh, but what is difficult right is what comes after and is this step uh. okay now now uh, you, you think about it uh, the, other, the other mistake that many of you made right is what is added what is added to the this is percent uh, this percent what is added to the sweet drink is water only water only that means uh, your uh, uh, volume of the syrup right remains unchanged okay what is added is um water so this x uh, we let it be water and when you multiply by 100 percent okay you add in water the syrup remains unchanged the water total is changed okay but of course this includes the syrup uh, syrup plus water okay then you add in some more water you times 100 percent the concentration of the syrup should be this so this in percentage percentage you can find the volume of water added so this is how you should do this question 
Now, you need to be very clear about percentages because every year they like to uh, test reverse percentages. Uh, uh. So the common mistake, right, is a lot of students use this, which is wrong. Then they take uh, 0.9 of this one. This one, no. This one, uh, when you take 0 0.9, um, you take 0 0.9 times this original, you are actually saying that the you're reducing the amount of syrup okay so the concept is wrong zero marks all right now next one is on uh, this tour to a trip to Thailand uh. okay so there are two coverages one is for individual one is for family okay now um, fixed price uh. some of you don't understand what is fixed price fixed price for first three days uh, they didn't say $34 per day or whatever uh, or did they say they didn't say right okay Mr. Lee's trip uh, you, you, you read uh, for two adults and up to two children this one 20% discount for travel within three days okay and this is the first three days and then this individual policy um, Mr. Lee's trip uh, lasts for N days find the possible values of N if the total insurance is cheaper for individual policy than the family policy that means uh, you want the individual policy to be cheaper than the family uh, policy all right now so for n uh, that means within three days uh, within three days right the individual policy will be 34 times 2 okay uh, that will give you $68 uh, whereas for the family uh, because there's a discount 20% discount right that means you only pay uh, 20% okay you pay 20% uh, and then you will have this here $60. So, may I check, is the individual cheaper than the family policy? No, right? Or it's more expensive than this one? Because individual, la, uh, you have this $34 here. And then, now we have to go and find uh, if it's greater than 3. Alright? What is the... Uh, n range of n values or the possible n values now when we have greater than three uh, greater than three right if you refer to your own uh, worksheet not say worksheet own exam paper uh, i've already, already sent you i'm going to calculate from here okay this table each subsequent day uh, so you look at this uh, table here 34 uh, 34 is for the first three days okay first three days right and then the what you call that uh 75 uh, is for family policy but the 20 percent discount is only within uh three days okay so now we are going more than that so how do we calculate the more than that it is <coughs> 15 here 15 then you times because this each subsequent day that means after the first three days so let's say uh it's 10 uh, then it's seven uh. that's why you must take n minus three this part i hope you are clear uh. 15 is from here n minus three is the number of days after the three days okay because the three days already accounted for here all right now we are coming back to here uh. Why is there 8 here? The 8 is the individual per day, right? Then n minus 3 again is the same explanation here. And uh, for 2, so you go and times 2. Uh. <coughs> okay, so now you go and calculate, 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 calculate. And then that will be your answer. And because they want you to find the possible values, they are not asking you for the range. They ask you to find possible. So you just list down all the possibilities. Cannot be 10 cannot be 3, 2, 1, okay, uh, because 3, 2, 1, then you'll be under this uh, package already, alright, 
so now we have up to uh, here okay did not show working for the first three days that is one of the mistake did not understand fixed price fixed price means fixed uh, it doesn't mean uh, you go and it, it doesn't mean uh, it's, it's price per day or whatever okay it's fixed price then uh, some of you did not write out this and gave inequality as the answer instead so if they if they want inequality they will say find the range of n all right but that's not what they're asking you uh. okay they're asking you for uh, the possible values of n so you got to list it out now before okay the same old story uh, but now in terms of exchange rate uh, now if you go to any uh, money changing store in singapore right you will see uh, on the digital like tv screen uh, you will see this thing called sell and buy okay this one uh, is um, the money changer is talking to you okay this money changer is behind the counter right he is talking to you then he say i sell you for this i buy from you so this is by the money talker uh, sorry money changer he is talking to you and he's telling you uh, uh i sell right 100 units of thai buck to you at this price i if you want um if i am buying from you 100 thai buck uh, it'll be at this price sing dollars uh, these are sing dollars sgd okay sing dollars do, do you follow so these numbers that you see on the screen uh, is they are talking to you oh so this uh, uh money changer they will say oh la, 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 la. okay uh, then during the trip they spent a total of this amount okay oh sorry sorry before that uh, before that uh he changed mr lee uh, mr lee is not the money changer okay mr lee is here mr lee so goes to the shop uh. <coughs> uh so goes to the shop right so mr lee has one thousand dollars but when exchanging his money to this uh, he is actually uh mr lee is buying the thai buck right so this fella is selling the thai buck which means we look at this particular one oh and uh you divide this by 4.2194 then you times 1000 you will get this so this is thai buck all right uh, then this fella mr lee uh, they spend a total of this amount so you take this minus this this is the left over money then he came back to singapore okay that's normally how you do it when you travel right uh when you travel uh, then you bring back thai buck right now thai buck you want to sell to this money changer so the money changer will buy the thai buck from you right that's why you look at this screen 100 thai baht is this then you go and work it out okay it's the same story as the previous one all right now the next one uh, is uh, uh what you call uh income tax income tax uh. so how do you read this uh? this thing right most of the figures there you don't have to use okay you just read the story uh mr lee married married means i uh, got the spouse means husband and wife uh, so he will use this and then he's earning some income and uh, stay with both parents so he will get two parents right uh so he will get this uh then he's entitled to the following tax deductions given that the chargeable income refers to gross annual income less tax deduction okay you you take some time to understand this huh but uh his gross annual in uh no you're supposed to calculate his gross annual income given that his income tax payable is nine six uh nine five six seven so he has to pay this amount of income tax now if he has to pay this amount of income tax uh, this is the amount that we use to see which um table values he should have all right so he pays nine thousand plus so not this not this not this not this not oh yeah this right okay 
is this ah, because nine thousand plus. Um, the first one two zero zero not counted. Okay, not counted. As in no, uh, whatever, uh, percentage ah, he simply pay this right. He simply pay this. But then ah, for the next, uh, forty forty thousand dollars ah, the income tax rate right, will be fifteen percent. And there is anything, uh. Anything more than one two zero zero ah, but less than this one six zero 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 or that right? You let's say eighteen thousand. Oh sorry, ah, uh, fourteen one hundred and forty thousand dollars ah. Okay, he will have to pay for the next forty percent this amount. Okay, and so this seven nine five zero ah plus. Uh, this six thousand right is thirteen thousand something. So the nine thousand something falls inside here, right? The nine thousand something falls inside. Inside here. Okay, and then you will be able to do the question already. Yeah. So, uh, this is actually done in the uh lower set. You have done this before. Uh, then now what we need to do ah uh, is to take this minus this. Why minus this ah? Uh, because for the first part right, is seven nine five zero. We are trying to get this fifteen percent, so we don't want this part here. Okay, and then you will find that oh your fifteen percent is this. You take um. One six one seven divided by fifteen, then you times hundred percent, you will get this amount. Okay, that means hundred percent of his uh, this part here. Hundred uh, percent because it's fifteen percent of that whatever value you have. So now one zero seven eighty right, one zero seven eighty ah uh, is fifteen percent of his income here uh, okay so what you need to do now right is to add these two together okay that will be the total chargeable income that means uh, 130780 130780 uh, this amount right the first uh, 120 thousand of his chargeable income ah, we don't charge anything all right but the next one which is one zero you take this minus this ah, one zero uh seven eight zero this amount right we charge 15 percent okay we charge 15 percent and then you will get this amount where is it one six one seven ah one six one seven that's why this this Plus, this will give you this. Okay? Yeah, so that's how this story goes. Uh, after that, right? After that, uh, you have to understand that uh, they want you to find out what is his gross income uh, for the year. Now, the gross income uh, is actually not this one, you know. That they ask, how are you talking about? This one, uh, this amount here right is after discount after all this relief that means uh there is an original value here okay but this original value uh, uh because he paid income tax right so he only has uh bring home pay is 0 0.8 percent next time you will, you will all know uh, you, you all work, work you will know uh. then this fella right minus away the one thousand minus away the two parents uh these are all discount to them uh also oh, sorry, sorry the two parents is here minus away the nine thousand uh, nine thousand here then minus away the spouse got one wife right uh then only then you get this fella did you understand so this is what we call the chargeable income and it's after all the discount all the relief Okay, uh, okay, so this is have uh this is what we have here. Now this kind of questions uh normally don't come out in uh this old level one, okay? Because it's very complicated.
Oh, and every country the tax system is slightly different, huh? But you just play safe, huh? Play safe, and then you you understand this question. It also helps you, okay, to develop your thinking. Now there are four villages P Q, P Q R S, huh? These are all villages. That means they're off or uh, flat on the ground, okay. And you must be very careful here. Q is uh due north of R. Q is north of R. That means this is the north direction. You must label this, okay? Label this as the north. Normally north is here this way, right? Or right hand side. Uh, now it's on the left hand side. So you must label this are uh, very important, huh? Okay, done already. Then you check. Okay, label, 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 all labeled, huh? Okay, then now you go to the next part. Show that P is due east of Q. Whenever we say due east, due west, we are talking about 90 degrees, right? Because north, south, east, west, huh? North, south, east, west, right? Um, it's 90 degrees, huh? Here, alright? So this, they are trying to ask you whether this is 90 or not. Oh, sorry, they are trying to ask you uh, to show that this is 90. Okay, now if this is 90, uh, you see there's no triangle, nothing on this side, right? No point working here. So you, I want to explore whether this is 90. Okay, uh, that's why they give you this, they give you this, they give you this. You can use your sec 2 work. You know the sec 2 work, you find this one square, then another line, uh, another line, you square this, square this, add together, you see whether these two values are the same. If it is it's the same, then it's by... Uh, converse of Pythagoras theorem okay so you note note the uh, remark here uh, your this must be separate from this that's what we mean by split working you cannot uh, you cannot straight away uh, where's the thing uh? oh I think I, I I didn't I thought I added in okay never mind you cannot straight away say uh, PR square equals PQ square plus QR square. Uh, remember your sec 2 teachers where I told you this is wrong because you cannot assume right from the start Pythagoras theorem cannot. You need to show them individually. That's what we mean by split up working. Oh, this value. Oh, exactly. You go to this value. Then you say since this one by converse. This one, this statement must be here. Uh, okay, we are. This statement must be here, then you must conclude this. Okay? You must say this, say this, say this, say this, then you get the marks. Alright? That is one method using Pythagoras theorem. The other method uh, is to, uh, you know the cosine rule? Okay? So this square equals to the two arms, then minus these two. Then you make this a subject. And you must show that this one equals 0, then this equals 90. This must be shown. Okay, when you use a uh, cosine rule, uh, you must show this. You know why? Because after that, you need to cause inverse and show this. If you don't show this, you will not get this mark here. Alright, uh, after you have done that, then you have proven that P is due east of Q. You must conclude, uh, make the concluding statement. Alright, that's all. Uh, Next one, they say find the bearing of S from R. Now, S from R, uh, many of you did not read this. That's why I say uh, our very common mistake uh, is never read question or you assume. Or you've done many questions, so you assume certain things. Uh, eh, where is it? Uh? I think I accidentally... Uh, okay, you go to read the question. Uh, you go to read the question, right? It stated somewhere that um, PSR uh, is obtuse. Okay, you go to read your question. Uh, I think I accidentally blocked up. Let, let me check. Uh, let me check whether it's hiding behind here. Uh, okay, I think I accidentally cut it. Oh dear. Okay. Okay, never mind. Lah, huh? I think you go and check your own paper, okay? It's hidden, it's, it's uh, written somewhere, right? That 
PSR is obtuse. Now, why is it important to know that PSR is obtuse? Because when you press your calculator, you go and calculate this, uh, uh, your, your uh, PSR right, will be acute anger. Uh, but in the question, they say it's obtuse. So you must take 180 minus the acute anger. Remember your ASTC? We don't want this. We want the other one. Okay, so follow. Uh. Okay, so that is what uh, many of you make as mistake here. Lah. Other than that, right, this is a very easy question. Okay? Now remember, when you are finding uh, bearing, uh, when you are finding bearing, it must be a 1, 2, 3 digit number. And because this is not exact, you need to round off to 1 dp. Okay? That is the other mistake you all make. Uh. Okay, uh, okay, I okay. This one, uh, sorry, uh, can you all work out the uh, 5 SF value? Okay, you will not be able to get 5 SF but because this and this uh, will add up to 0, so it will be a 4 SF value. Okay, because you need this value in the later part, in the later part, in the later part, right. Do not use this, uh, do not use this. I thought I changed already, but uh, I think I forgot to save. Okay, sorry about that. Uh. This one, right, should be the 5SF or the 4SF value. You don't use the 3SF one, okay? Uh, then you will be able to get this. Uh. Okay, uh. Uh, this part, I won't go through because I think quite okay. Uh, the time, right, you have to remember uh, that this is in meters. So we need to change to kilometers. Why? Because the speed is in kilometers per hour. And what you obtain right is in hours, you need to times 60, okay, uh, to get the minutes and then later times another 60 to get the seconds. Okay? And one uh, error some of you make uh, is you uh, to find shortest distance from Q to PR right, and S to PR. Uh, uh, so you assume straight line, okay? It's not a straight line, ah. Uh. Okay, now, uh, we go to the next question. Now this question, there is a blank here for you to fill in. You just sub this here. Make sure you put the brackets. Then you will be able to get one point nine. All right. Uh, follow the accuracy of the question because they say all these are rounded off to one dp. So this must be one dp. Very important, huh? Okay, now the next part, uh, you see, in your syllabus, uh, they are very nice to you, you know, they draw everything for you, draw the axis, all everything, all labelled for you, some more, okay? Then, what you need to do is just to uh, draw a smooth curve for them. So, you see, they expect you to draw a smooth curve because everything has been drawn for you already, huh? Okay? And, next. Use your graph to find the solutions. Now, the key words here are use your graph. Okay, so what you need to do uh, is uh, you need to somehow manipulate this given equation that you need to solve uh, into this graph that you have drawn. That means you need to get this part here. Okay, uh, so how do I get this part here? Let me write down here this equation. Uh. You need to step by step, starting with the biggest, uh, highest power uh, term. So, the highest power term, oh, this and this are the same, very good. Then you go to the next highest, uh, same, very good. Hey, this fella, if I minus 3x both sides, see, I minus 3x here, I minus 3x here, I'll get this right. And then I want the 1, so I plus 1 on the left, I must plus 1 on the right. Whatever you do on the left, you do on the right, uh, you will be fine. This and this will cancel, this and this is 6. So this, don't you agree, is your this curve equation. This will be your line, y equals 6. This must be stated, uh, you say draw or you say plot this fella, okay? Then what you do is you draw a, a straight line.
okay then this will be your x value now you must take uh you must bear in mind uh, uh each box right how to find the value of each box now there are 10 here 10 here so 20 boxes is 0 0.5 then one box uh, will be equals to 0 0.025 okay so you go and count uh, and then you go and multiply accordingly but be very careful okay if you count from here uh, that's uh maybe 11 boxes right it must be 11 times this plus plus this original starting point where you were at okay so be very careful here uh now those who wrote 0 0.78 uh, if you see carefully right uh you cannot read this from the graph so it's not acceptable uh, huh? okay when you get back your paper you take a look uh. now use your graph no i would strongly recommend uh, that uh when you get your back your paper actually you won't be getting back your paper so soon yeah you won't be getting back your paper so soon uh. so uh i would rather that you learn all this correct method okay when you get back your paper some of you do very long method then you get it correct then you don't look at the question anymore then forever you'll be doing long method so i i recommend that you learn to use more efficient shorter methods so that you can save time in the exam okay now use your graph find the x coordinates of the point where the gradients are minus 3 what do you do you first of all must draw uh, lines uh, with gradient minus 3 okay so you have a guiding line uh, how to get minus 3 you know you know that um, wait, uh, Okay, you know that a line going this way will have negative gradient okay and you want the rise over the run uh, to be three right so you choose a uh, three here and you choose one here definitely rise over run is three right okay so that's what we are going to do um this is the y axis this is the x axis i want a line that is going this way okay uh this is my guiding line uh, so i choose the value uh, three and i choose one here okay then uh, i'll have a guiding line oh dear uh uh, you will do better on paper huh? can you see that this is my guiding line but this is not my answer okay this is my starting line then what do i do uh? oh uh you use your ruler okay then another ruler here okay that's why you must bring your set square and everything uh? then you slide you slide okay you put this here okay exactly on the dotted line just now uh, and then you put this here okay and you slide until you touch only one point on your curve here all right so this will give you uh this line here which you must draw a solid line uh, this line must be drawn okay now this line will tell us that uh this This value here, okay, is your gradient 3. Do, do you follow? Uh, so that is your answer. Minus 3 point something, minus 3 point 7 something. So it's uh, somewhere around here. You go and calculate. Uh. Not calculate. Uh. You go and just minus 0 0.37. That's all. Alright. Now next one. On the grid, draw this line for this. So to draw this line, uh, you have to make Y the subject. Okay? And actually, any two points will do. But the two points, make sure that they are relatively far away. Uh, I'll recommend 0 and 1. Okay? So this is 1 point, 1 point, And then you draw the line. They give you marks for uh, this. That is this line here okay draw this and then next part uh, they take they say that the x coordinate of the point is a section of this and this give the solutions of this 
find the values of A and B. Now, for this question, you must use graphical uh, method, meaning uh, you must use simultaneous equation. So you cannot do this. Uh, you cannot use calculator or whatever, or you cannot suck in values that you see there and then solve. No. Okay? Um, the first step must be simultaneous. What, what do you mean? Uh? Meaning, uh, your this y value, okay, and this x value, this is like your equation 1, this is like your equation 2, uh, we have to sub 2 into 1. Okay? That means how uh, we are using graphical uh, simultaneous, we are... Uh, we are using this graphical uh, solving a graphical simultaneous equation to see where they cut each other. Okay, but you don't sub in this, sub in this, sub in this. Some of you go and sub in this, sub in this, sub in this, uh, and then you go and get these values here. No, you don't do that. You don't do this, uh, this one, this one. You don't do this one, okay? Uh, what you do is. Uh, you have to sub in here and then you manipulate until you get the x cube x square x uh, x here x and a number then you can find the value of a and b a being 23 b being uh 5 right okay you go work it out huh? so that is how you should do it <coughs> okay now uh, arc length, uh, area of sector remains our weak area. Okay, you, um, you must train yourself to visualize. Uh. You must train yourself to visualize. Now, this piece of wood, this one don't need visualize. Uh. This one is just like that. This one is like that. Okay, so this part here all being cut off. So you only have this section here. It's a prism, okay? And remember, uh, this here we call, uh, sorry, this is the radius. Uh, we call this sector, this whole thing. Alright, but when I draw a line here, then this part here, right, this part here, which is a cross section, uh, we call segment. Some of you don't know, alright. Now, because it's a smaller part, of this big circle so we call it the minor segment all right you need to know all these terms and these are all in radians so you need to change your calculator mode to radians now a piece of wood which is uh, 50 cm long uh, is in the shape of this oh it's the same thing uh, it's the same thing sorry given that the area of the minor segment is this one that means they are saying these are uh, is this 3 point whatever whatever show that r equals to 5 point this correct to three decimal places now how do we show that they give you this area so you can actually find this area using half r square theta half r square theta uh, is this whole sector okay minus this is half a b sin c you remember your trigo you learn what this rectangle uh sorry this uh, triangle right half a b that's r times r so r square uh, sine of this correct or not big minus the small you get this shaded part all right so what i need to do is to equate it to this oh wait uh. equate it to this uh, and then i manipulate Okay, you try uh, uh you must try to get the answer you don't just see my oh i i, I, I forgot to okay, you you must try to uh get this answer like you must try to get this answer okay don't see the, oh very easy very easy you need to practice okay and this part here as i always tell you uh as i've always told you lah, you must show the 5sf answer before you round off this is important okay you must always do that huh? okay then some of you uh you take the sector the sector and segment you're confused lah. and then you did not show this 
you did not show this you must show this before you round off okay then the next part right i think due to english uh, english you don't understand what we are saying here okay, we are we are we are you don't understand what we are saying here uh we are saying uh, that this sally has this 200 meter row okay and you want to beautify the outline and paste on the edges edges is where okay then they ask you whether there's enough ribbon or not so edges uh, means it's not the side it's not the face this is what we call the face 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 huh? so there are one two three and then at the bottom four faces but the edge is like that one this is the edge ma. okay and this edge is the same as this edge one two uh, three then at the back is four right uh, then this is five six so there are six edges uh huh? and they are like a uh, mirror image on uh, this and this same uh, this and this same this and this same okay so what you need to do right is to uh you see uh, this edge very simple is 50 this edge is 50 no big deal uh. so what you need to do now is to find the r theta the arc length right this r theta and this is also r theta so later you times two lah okay and this part here uh you can use uh what you call that uh, cosine rule okay to find this using this and because now you already know that this this is two point something right okay so what i'm going to show you is the answer uh, because the diagram is up there so up length right is r theta you can find this already and remember you see always not 3 sf but 5 sf okay you don't need to write 5 sf as long as you show the 5 sf value you are fine okay uh. then the length of the segment right which what are they talking about uh, the length of the segment uh okay this one uh, they are using the uh Pythagoras theorem i show you uh. they are saying oh half of this uh half of this uh then this one right that i already know this uh radius so it's opposite Oh, so it's a uh, adjacent over hypotenuse correct okay then you can find the answer already yeah yeah oh sorry sorry is is um sorry we're not finding this we are finding this are uh, opposite over hypotenuse here here, here. we're finding here then because this length equal this length uh, uh the a max paper 2 yes something like that also right oh but you all didn't realize it lah, oh. okay so uh this is how you find the length of the segment length of the segment means here 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 this line here which is the same as this line here okay clear okay now we are just left with these two you times two this one you times two this one you times two so finally oh this is not two uh, this is two meters right so it's 200 cm okay uh, so that there, there's sufficient uh, there is sufficient ribbon okay ribbon uh, you don't count like that one uh. okay after that another question already uh, a b c d is a parallelogram right <coughs> uh, point a lines on the y axis and uh, da, 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 da. so you read the whole story uh. <coughs> it's very confusing because <coughs> it's very confusing uh, because there's no diagram to help us okay there's no diagram to help us so what we need to do right is um we need to do a rough sketch but this rough sketch also not easy because not much information given but we can more or less uh after that uh, verify with all this to see whether our diagram is correct or not okay now you must remember uh, whenever we give you a quadrilateral or a uh, 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 rectangle or whatever right you must go in a cyclic fashion okay you cannot anyhow jump cyclic fashion means uh, like a b c d okay or uh, a the other way around also can uh, a b c d okay it cannot be it cannot be anyhow jump kind of it cannot be a b c d cannot unless the question says a c b d ah then it's drawn like that lah or like the like the 
uh, like the AMAX question given to you during prelims like that, okay? Huh? Okay, so remember this must be drawn in cyclic fashion and A lies on the y axis. Huh? Okay, so I don't know where, lah. I don't know where, huh? but I know that because it lies on the uh, wait, how to get this back? Yeah, because it lies on the Uh, uh, because it lies on the y axis right it must have it must have some y value and the x value is zero this is very important you know because just by knowing one or the unknown uh, you win already okay uh, if you don't know that this is zero you have x y right then you need uh, to find two unknowns to find two unknowns you need two equations but right now because you write this as zero y uh, you end up with only one equation you need to form okay so this is very important uh. okay let us do what we are very sure about first six minus one uh. this is point d so we labeled it first okay a where can it be uh? The other heat they give us is a c is a horizontal line so i think about it uh. If it's A, B, C, D, yeah, it's possible, right? So maybe, maybe I draw my A here just to try. Lah. You, you know what I mean? Not? A and C is somewhere here. So it might be like that. Lor. I don't know. Can C be here? Uh, actually can also, uh, but never mind. I draw here, okay? Try, lah. You, don't, you don't think too much. Huh? Uh, eh, sorry, this is C, uh, A, C. So if this is uh, A, then this must be B, because these two must be parallel, right? Parallelogram. Uh. So this must be B, then this must be C, then this must be joined to D. Am I correct? So let me just touch up a bit. Uh. Uh, maybe it's like that, I don't know. Uh, but at least now my this diagonal is horizontal. Horizontal, and then uh, I must... You see, I label here already. Uh, I don't label here. I'm not making use of my diagram. You must make use of your diagram. Many of you draw diagram, but you don't use it. Then no point drawing. Okay? Uh, after this, uh, then they tell you that BC... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just now, just now I forgot to tell you. Uh, BC is this way, right? So B cannot be here. Lah. Uh, so BC is this way, meaning the gradient is minus 4 over 3 if this gradient is minus 4 over 3 this gradient also is minus 4 over 3 and using the gradient formula you can find the answer okay now remember coordinates you cannot leave it like that you must write it in this form okay and the common mistake is that many of you assume that this is perpendicular to this this is not true then you did not label a b c d so you confuse yourself and some of you are still using a uh, x over y for gradient that is wrong it should be y over x right rise over run okay uh find the length of b c b c here uh. b c are you able to find the length of b c actually the length of b c okay let me update uh. the length of b c is the same as the length of uh, AD okay because it's a parallelogram uh, you go and work it out okay then given that the gradient of AB is 0 0.8 find the coordinates of uh, B okay uh, sorry find the coordinates of C so if this is 0 0.8 this must be 0 0.8 and you must infer uh, infer correctly if this is 0, 07 this must be so you see how powerful the diagram is i'm at level 7 you must be at level 7 also right and this is the only unknown so you can use this gradient to help you find the answer because this is parallel to this this is parallel to this so let me repeat uh, exam is all about techniques you follow my method, you use, you draw a diagram, you use the diagram, you win. Okay? Now, this part here, 
you many of you use the shoelace method but actually no need lah huh? it's just half times um if you notice ah huh, this is half times the base which you can find okay once you get this ah huh, i uh, i don't know what value is here huh? uh 18 uh, so 16 so after that you get 16 7 right so this is 16 so and from here to here, here to here, you actually know the length, right? So it's this triangle, you find the area already, then you times 2. Because this triangle is the same as this triangle. They are congruent, okay? So you see whether you understand this or not. It's much faster than um, shoelace method. Okay, Nuru took 2.5 hours to travel from A to B on the way da, 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 like that. Huh? Then, okay, so in this particular question, right, there is no uh, unknown given to you. So you yourself have to come up with the unknown. Uh, what is the unknown that you need to come up with? They want the speed, right? So they want the speed from uh, A to B. So you give it, you let this be the speed. You follow? So that later when you find X ready, uh, immediately you have the answer already. Uh, okay, so because uh, she took 2.5 hours, so uh, speed times time. Okay, must be equals to the speed times time on the return journey. Uh, return journey, you took 15 minutes less. Now, 15 minutes, uh, take note. Uh, 15 out of 60, right, is actually one quarter. One quarter, that's how you get this. Huh? One quarter of an hour. Huh? Because this is hours, so you must change this to hours. Very important. Huh? This part here, the O-level, right, they normally require you to do some unit conversion. And because you increase your speed, so X plus 4, that's how you get this. And then you pray, whoa, 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 then you get the answer already. Okay? And now, uh, average speed for the whole journey from A to B and back to this. Uh, don't you agree that uh, speed times time is distance? Okay. Then, the total time uh, for this, uh, because they take uh, 0.25 less, right? So, it's this one. So, average speed is total distance divided by total time. Leave it in this. And then, that's your answer. Okay. Now, how to find, uh, uh, how to draw, uh, okay, it's a constant speed, right? So, from 0, you go all the way to 90, okay? And then from 90, you must label this, uh, this must be labelled, uh, there, must be labelled, okay? Then, uh, the return journey, right, is go the other way, uh, right? Go the other way, and you will end up here at 4.75, must label, okay? Must label the quantity here, which is this value here, because it's total time. Now next, huh? uh, okay, this particular question, right, uh, A, B, C, D is a parallelogram, you see carefully, huh? A, B, C, D is a parallelogram, and then they show you all this already, parallel, this length, equal this length, this length, equal this length, huh? this one is isosceles, C, D, E is isosceles, C, D, E isosceles, they also label for you really very, very nice, huh? okay, uh, E and F are on A, D and B, C respectively, you just see, oh, okay, uh, this one are parallel lines, parallel, parallel, parallel. This is 3x, okay. This one point five, whatever, okay, whatever. Ah, uh, so you are supposed to find the value of x. How to find the value of x? Um, you take a look at the question, ah. Uh, take a look at the question. Don't you agree that um, this angle here, okay, C E D ah, uh, C E D here. Uh, is equals to this part here. This one equals to this one. Okay, and then uh, can you see that the uh, three point five minus one point five ah, huh? okay, will be your this angle here. Which means this also. That's what they mean here. Now, because this question says state your reasons clearly, uh, many of you didn't. Uh, state reason so uh, minus marks this one so you state wrong reason oh uh, actually for corresponding angle uh, uh, you must state the 
um, you must take the parallel lines, meaning this AB parallel to EF. Okay? Yeah, then this one base angle or isosceles triangle. Okay, this one is here AB parallel CD. This one is correct. Then you can get the answer. Okay, so that's how you do it. Huh? You must state the reasons. Now, this particular question, you, uh, most of you, you read wrongly or uh, I don't know what happened. Huh? You, you, you didn't read this and then you wrote here N. Alright? Uh, read carefully. The ratio of an interior angle of an N-sided polygon. So this is the sum of interior angles. When you divide by N, then it is one angle, right? This is the interior angles. Correct? Okay, now, uh, it's 15 out of 16 of the other one, the interior angles of uh, N plus 1. So this part here, uh, actually the formula is N plus uh, N, N plus 2 minus 2, right? Okay. Actually, it's N, uh, but the N, right, is N plus 2, ma. Do you follow me? The number of sides are minus 2, but the number of sides is N plus 2, so this will cancel out. That's how you get this. Okay, but the total number is still N plus 2. It's not N here. Many of you wrote N here. That's what I mean here. Okay, so uh, you get this, then you cancel, cancel, because the 180 can cancel, right? So you must know how to simplify more effectively efficiently yeah uh. then you get this then you cross multiply blah, 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 blah. then you get this because n must be positive so you reject the other one now this part here normally you will come out in paper one uh. Uh, okay but now it came out in paper two that's fine okay um equidistant from a b a b and b c means you draw the perpendicular bisector so you Cut here, cut here, then put your uh, compass here, uh, then you cut here, cut here, then you draw the line. Okay? So that's all. Alright? Uh. Then if equidistant between A, A and D, these two points, uh, then you put here, you cut here, put here, you cut here, oh, so it's a cut here, cut here, then you join, then you get the answer. Okay? Three marks, very easy to get. Uh. Okay, this is a very... Uh, irritating question. Last question already. Uh. Uh, Karen, wow, well, such a long story. Uh. Selling one day, then he specialized as a planer, uh, whatever, whatever. Like that, like that, like that. Okay, this is important because this is a cost. Later, you may need to use it. Uh. Okay, then they tell you, oh, it shows the average so in the morning and afternoon. So this refers to morning. Actually, we have done this similar question before. I don't know whether you remember or not. Morning and afternoon, very, very irritating one. Uh. Okay. Then the necessary ingredients even more irritating. You see, so many things. Then ingredient, ingredient. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, for this kind of questions, ah, uh, is what we call a uh, real world context question. Okay, every uh emacs paper two there will be one real world context question. Normally, it's the last question. Why? Because it's very irritatingly long. Yeah. So this is what we call irritatingly long, lah. Huh? Okay. Then they give you a lot of information that you may or may not be using, like this. Okay, so how to approach this question? Uh? You don't spend too much time reading, like, wow, okay, wow, blah, blah, blah. okay, you just roughly know, oh, okay, ingredients like that. Okay, ingredients are most probably you have to use everything, uh, huh? but down here, unit price, bundle price, you maybe have to use all, maybe don't have to, uh, we don't know. Uh, sometimes they give you more, okay? So now you go to the question first, uh, see what they want from you. The question wants you to evaluate this. And the good thing is that, very nice to you, they actually have the A here. So this is what's important. Huh? Then you bring the A down, right? You bring the A down. Huh? Then it's a... Okay, many of you still not familiar with uh, matrix multiplication. This one is... We, matrix multiplication, huh? you have the row by the column all right so row column uh row how many one uh column two so it's a one by two for this this is a two by three so overall it should be a these two are the same uh, it should be a one by three that's how you get this okay then 
uh, the next part is the irritating part uh, because uh, they tell you that the profit earned from this will be donated to voluntary is it true that the donation is more than 90 percent of a cost price a uh, 900 percent so you need to find cost price okay you need to find uh, profit profit earn because the profit earn is the donation so you need to see whether profit earn is more it's more than 900 percent yeah so uh, number of cakes sold per day you have to find first ah. Uh, uh, then you see uh, where to get this information oh sorry sorry I forgot to do this part uh. Uh, state what it means okay state what it means so you see uh, state what each element uh, okay so in this case uh, in this case we accept this but uh, many of you listed each of these each of these what it means so that's very good that's very clear la. this is what we mean by a specific explanation so you see sometimes uh, very irritating right sometimes they accept these la. sometimes they say no like that okay so you just give this uh, it's very safe okay because in the markets report right the Cambridge actually give specific explanation so we follow them okay uh, Remember last year or what uh, they say must give this not zero then now uh this one okay already uh. okay never mind uh now use metric multiplication find the total revenue total revenue uh, is the total number okay where is the total number here is here times the uh amount here just now I show you the value right here this one very important because it's the cost all right so this is a one by three this is a three by one so overall will be a one by one and you must put bracket uh, those who never put bracket is zero okay now this is your answer now the last part uh, the last part is uh you go and find right <coughs> you go and look at it yourself uh, because it's very tedious you go and find uh, egg how much milk how much flour how much this is your cost price, right? Ah, uh, then the cocoa la, whatever la. Oh, okay. The cocoa uh, whatever. Uh, so on and so forth. So the total cost you can find, and then the profit uh, is whatever you earn, right? The minus whatever is here. Here, your cost. That's your profit. Ah, then you go and find the percentage and then you see whether it's true. You must have con uh, conclusion with comparison. Alright? Okay, so uh, we will end here. I'll continue next time uh, with the, uh, what do you call that? AMAX. Thank you.